being grounded <clears throat> in today's world is really important. But I'm not sure if everyone understands what being grounded really means. It doesn't mean you heavy like lead and you stay put, okay? It means you're like a tree. So you are able to, and, any, and as we know, let's, let's look at nature. If a tree grows in its perfect environment, it will flourish. And especially if it's a fruit tree, right? It's going to flourish, it's going to bear leaves, it's going to bear blossoms, it's going to bear fruit. And when it's ready to share its fruit, it'll drop it, right? So we can look at ourselves in a similar way. So to be grounded really means that you would start your day with a spiritual practice, as I always say, that one hour a day where you connect with yourself, you check in with yourself, you check in with spirit or source or God, and you just have that time to refuel. Whether you're breathing or doing some yoga or exercise or stretching or whatever it is you do, you know, um, and you, along with that, you're doing that spiritual practice, the interior work. You're able to write down the things that you need to look at. Writing is such a powerful tool. Wow, I wish more people would learn the power of journaling and the, and the power of actually writing down your feelings, uh, your pain, as well as the positive things. Because, you know, the more we write things down, it's the more we see things clearly and the more we're able to listen because really writing is listening to ourselves, right? We're expressing ourselves, especially when we're writing a journal or something like that. So it gives us a good indication of what's happening within ourselves. And if we have already decided that we choose change, we then discipline ourselves accordingly. So we then start that spiritual practice, which then leads into wanting to look at your problematic relationships, the people that you have problems and issues with in your life that cause a negative frequency in your vibration when you think about them or talk to them or whatever. Don't think that that doesn't affect you. You might be having a dormant in your cells, this big feud you have with whoever, and you might not talk about it or hide it away, but it comes out in your frequency. So when we look at these things and when we choose to bring them to the fore, we then shine light on them, which enables us to heal. Once we shine light on something, we can see what it is. And then we can act in accordance with that, right? So that will be the first thing. You know, you heal your relationship with yourself. I always say it comes all comes back to me with yourself and with God, source, your creator. You get into alignment with that. That will then take you to the place of healing and choosing to heal your relationships. You see, the beauty about this is you don't then feel forced to confront a situation that you're not ready to encounter. Spirit guides you, God guides you, and provides opportunities for you to face these challenges and to face these encounters. You will know when you're ready. It's like that athlete, and he's about to do his 100-meter sprint. He's there. He's ready. He's poised to go. He's just waiting for the gunshot to tell him he can sprint. It's that kind of feeling inside of yourself where you go, yes. I want to talk to my mother now. I want to talk to my child. I'm going to make that call. You see, whether you think that's grounding or not, it's very grounding. Grounding doesn't mean you stay and not move, right? Grounding means that you feel more stable. You feel more in control of your life. You feel more able to deal with situations. You might feel ready to go and resign from work or confront your boss or whatever it might be. Every person has a different scenario. Then, of course, that would lead to the next leg of the table, right? Which would be the third leg, which is the thoughts. So then we start as our feelings or our emotions or our, the frequency, the loving relationship we start cultivating with ourselves, that then sends the frequency as well to the mind, to the brain, to start thinking differently 
to start opening our minds differently, to start looking at the world differently, to start realizing that that negative situation that happened five years ago or 15 or 20 and all 20 was really an opportunity for me to see things differently. Maybe now I can go back and have a look at what that is. I'm wiser, I'm older, I'm more chilled, I've learned a lot since then. What did I miss then? And then suddenly, ping. And that's when the third eye opens, so to speak, the eye of perception. You start perceiving the world differently in a more, as a more beautiful, harmonious place. You start understanding healing is available to you. You start understanding your body is designed to heal itself when you're in alignment with God. Jesus was an amazing healer, the most amazing. Why? Two reasons, in my opinion. A, the people who he healed were fully believing that they were able to receive healing and that they could be healed. Secondly, when Jesus healed people or anyone, <clears throat> he only saw them in their full, beautiful glory as God has created us. So then you start seeing the world in its perfection. Even the imperfections become perfections through which we learn and grow. That opens up everything. <sighs> the whole body, the thoughts, the emotions, everything, your whole energy system starts changing. And then the next thing is that then manifests into the physical aspect of who you are, your body. So then illnesses and ailments just somehow start healing themselves. You don't need to try and do things anymore. It occurs of itself. You are naturally in sync with others who are on the same vibe as you. You are intuitive. You pick up each other's not necessarily thoughts or anything like that, but you can perceive when someone's maybe in trouble and you can pick up a phone and say, are you okay? And it'll be the right call at the right moment. We start understanding we're multidimensional beings and that there's so much more in this world than just us in our physical form. And when we start realizing that and we realize that we can connect with animals. We can hear the voices of animals. We can hear the voices of nature. We, we, we hear the voice of God. That's when life becomes truly abundant. It's not about money. And as I always say, when the last animal is killed and the last tree has been sawn down, you can't eat the dollar bowl. So we are creators. The greatest joy of being on this planet is that we get to create. And anything that comes from a creative space grows and creates more. We are not destroyers. That creates less of itself, that inverts itself. So we create, we create life, we create joy, we create love just through our actions every day. And that is what grounds us.